Hi, in this video we'll take a look at a couple of advanced features of the Dynertia Free Dyno software. It's a feature probably not used by too many people, but it is more, um, more, more sophisticated if you have particular requirements. What we're looking at here is a single trace set. We've got many analysis screens, but this is just, just one of them that we'll use here. We can see that we have five input channels which are hardwired into Dynertia um, free hardware. We have some calculated channels as well. What we're interested in here is maths one and maths two. Now on this particular trace, there is no maths channel. So I haven't chosen a particularly good one here to demonstrate. So let's go to another trace. Let's try trace two which was a TL run two test. Here we are. So we've now got this line coming up through here, this additional line, which I happen to have named example. So what a math channel is, it allows us to add additional channels, two of them, using any form of any calculation we can just about imagine based on other sensor inputs, other calculated channels like power and torque and RPM. It's a very powerful tool. So if I put my cursor here, you can see the values at example, which is what I called that maths channel, and I have nothing applied to maths too. So I've made a channel, a maths channel called example. Now, where that data has come from to create this curve, it's quite easy to see. If we click up here, Math Channel 1 Expression. So the formula used for that was kilowatts times 0.5. So basically half, what I've done here is half of the kilowatt reading has become its own channel. Not terribly useful, I was obviously just doing something for testing purposes. So let's have a look how we generate this maths channel. First of all, from our main screen, we go the main graph screen, File Explorer. And this is where, from within Explorer, is where we generate our maths channels. So this is a screen where we can preview and look at our data for traces that we've done. You can see the math channels here are empty. Oh, there's one that's populated. So sitting behind here is some formula being used to calculate these values. Once again, we can see what that formula was. Oh, it's the same one. Okay, so let's see how we create these additional channels of data and what we can do with it. So up here we have this maths button and here we have two little indicator lamps which tell us whether channel one, uh, whether math one or math two is ready to be applied. So you'll see that in a minute. So when I go and press on the maths button, here is our expression builder as we call it, where we can create quite complex formulas if we wish or very simple ones that can become an additional channel. Once we have a formula, we then apply it to either channel one or math channel two, depending on our choice. So as an example, let's use a preloaded one. We have here a simple one, let's say kilowatt to horsepower. So if I double click on that, there it is there. That's the formula. So that, where we got that from is down here. Here we have operators. So these are mathematical functions. Or operators is the proper term. We also have a comment as well. So we can do a formula for expression. We can have that and then write a little comment. I'll show you maybe an example of that. So that's what's the operators that are available to us. We have some additional mathematical functions, including a lot of conversions that are already done. Here's a horsepower to kilowatt conversion, which is the opposite to that one. Kilowatt to horsepower, here we are, this one here. So we can select from pre, 
pre-calculated or predetermined functions. We don't always have to even develop our own. That's what I've done here. I've chosen one that will convert the kilowatt channel into horsepower. Um, we do have metric and imperial mode, so probably the only reason you might want to do this if for some reason you wanted to display kilowatt and horsepower on the same graph. Um, that's one potential use of it. Down here we have constants. So information here is coming from within the dyno systems itself and won't change for each run. So when you when you perform a test run, we have the temperature, barometric pressure, all this information, maximum RPM, all this data is recorded for each run. And you can also use that in your calculation. Um, and here we actually have variables. So these are things that change during a run. We also have the data channels, for example, so they're continually changing. We also have down here freely usable variables that we can choose. Um, private and public, don't worry about too much that, but that that is where they are visible in the um, in the expression. So whether they can be a, they remain a value that stays the same through the whole expression. Um, or only in that expression. I'll, gi I'll give you an example is by far the best way to do this. So first of all, and also these values here, these are test values, so we can check that our calculation works. So let's say here we've, we have kilowatts to horsepower one. That's just gonna convert number one kilowatts to horsepower. That's not very useful. So the answer would be the result would be 1.34, which is correct. It would be much more useful if we were trying to convert kilowatts to horsepower, if in here we made this kilowatts. Okay, so now when we are performing a test, it will take the kilowatt column and turn it into, um, into horsepower. We can test that our expression works by entering down here. Um, let's enter a value of 200, 200, evaluate the expression, and that's what we get. So the calculation took the value of 200 and converted it into horsepower. When we write an expression, we should save it and then we can apply it later. So let's do a little bit more of an advanced example. Perhaps a good example is we, you know, you might have um, an air mass meter fitted and you want to calculate the air mass and convert it into grams per stroke of the engine. So, you know, we may need to, we may use there for engine RPM and do some calculations. Let's just make uh, an expression up here. Let's do variable 10 equals one. Now I'll do a comment, so anything after this point doesn't count. So I'll write that um, it can be engine size in liters. The second line of our expression, um, let's maybe do a calculation. I'm just making something up here. 900 times the horsepower. Um, let's divide that by our variable. So divide by one, in other words. And divide that by RPM. So there we go. We've, that may be the expression that we wish to apply mathematically to one of the channels. We could test it out by entering some data. Maybe we're dealing with horsepower, so let's make this a neat number, 100. Our RPM is another 2,500, that'll do. Evaluate expression, and there will be the result. So it actually allows us to 
create any formula we wish, or expression we call it, to apply to a channel. It allows us to feed in data and actually check that we get the correct result because we can write very sophisticated and complex expressions to create those channels if we wish. So now that we have it, we should save it. That's very important. So let's save it here. Let's call it my expression. Save. So when we want to apply an expression to a channel, we choose which one we want. Let's say Math Channel 2. I load whichever expression I want from my list. Uh, let's do the one that we just created called My Expression. Okay. Now when I exit from here, it's telling me I'll left click to apply that to a file. So let's apply that. Well, let's do it to this one. Um, actually, we'll do it to one down here. This one here will do. So I'll click on it. It will ask me, do I wish to apply it? Yeah, I do. I can give it a meaningful name that will appear when I analyze the data later. It's a very meaningful name. Leave that and I can set the scale as well if I choose to change that for um, later when I'm viewing it or analyzing it. It's usually okay. So we created an expression, it's been applied and now appears here in our data table. So we have generated this table. generated this Math Channel 2 using data that we already had available and manipulating it. And it will always keep track of that now so I can actually see what my expression was. It's permanently now attached to that file. And that's pretty much all there is to it. It's a very powerful tool. Maths. Let's put. Let's put uh, math one. Uh, clear is actually just a zero. I use sometimes to clear existing math channels when I've applied them. Um, let's apply sample. It just divides it by two. So that will now be ready to be applied. I can see that it tells me here on the little indicator that we're loaded and ready to go. So any run that I wish to apply that to, this particular run here, for example, don't worry about changing it, and there we have Math Channel 1. So that now becomes a channel that we've created against a particular run, and we can, uh, in many, you know, many anal analysis screens. If I choose that um, particular one, there we are, there's my channel I created. So I now have a created channel here. It's as simple as that. Thank you very much for watching this video. Hope to see you again for some more um, features of Dynosia Free Software. Thank you. Bye.